You know, the problem with making a man-sized submarine sandwich is the mess you make trying to eat it. You bite into this baby, you're gonna have more spillage than the Exxon Valdez. <laughs> but as always, where there's a will, there's a handyman. Get yourself an old caulking tube. Empty it first. Okay, now instead of putting the goodies into the sandwich, you put them in here. Okay, we're ready for the next step. Get yourself a drill bit that's the same size as the widest part of the nozzle. Doesn't matter what kind of bit it is, wood, metal, even concrete, this won't be hard to drill. And if you don't have a vise, just hold the bun between your legs and you'll find out how Submarine Sandwich got its name. Okay, make sure you don't drill all the way through. Anybody who's had the flu knows it's impossible to control both ends at the same time. And we're good to go. Okay, we got her all filled up. Now comes the tricky part. Getting the tube out and plugging the hole with a gherkin. And it's just that easy. No muss, no fuss, and she's real good eating. Next time, I'll hold the pickle. up the lodge this week. Harold's been asked over to his fiance's house to meet everybody in the family, so I made him a little gift to take along and help make a good first impression. <laughs> Normally, the only people that like Harold at first sight are dentists. You know, Uncle Red, yeah. I was thinking, you know, I don't, I don't think I should take a gift. What? I don't think I should take a gift. I think they should accept me just as I am. Wow, that's a lot to ask, Harold. Uh, and you know, I put a lot of work into this gift. I wrapped it and everything. Oh my! I wonder what it could be. Well, you know, when Bonnie's family sees you, they'll probably say exactly the same thing. Well, I'm just sure they already have a barbecue, Uncle Ray. Oh, no, no, not like this one, Harold. It's remote control. Oh, how does that work? Pretty well. <laughs> So are you going to take the gift or not? Well, I guess so, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's certainly different. You should talk. <laughs> you know, I really like the safety aspect of it. You know, I'm yeah. just worried that they may not be able to get it to work. You huh? know? I don't suppose you wrote a manual? Well, Harold, it's just like unlocking your car. Oh, hey, look, it's supper time. Let's fire up the barbecue. receives this coupon for one free anger management class at Big Bob's Institute of Tough Love. You've tried the rest. Now sit down and shut up. All right, cover yours here, Mike. Fred, you got 30 seconds to get Mike Hammer to say this word. Parent. Parent. All right, listen. And go! Uh, okay, Mike, your father is... One of three guys. <laughs> Okay, uh, this is a person who raises children. Oh, detentions officer. <laughs> no, okay, uh, let's say you're a kid who wants to go to a movie that has sex and violence in it. You need to bring along a... Fake ID. <laughs> no, okay, okay. Uh, when some woman is about to have your baby, that means soon you will be... Hiding out in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember last year you were dating that woman and you were nervous about meeting her... Husband. <laughs> No, uh, uh, okay, okay, let's try this. Um, these are older people that you loved when you were growing up, but they're gone now. Grand... Oh, Funk Railroad! <laughs> Almost out of time, right? Yeah, uh, okay, Mike, when you think of your mother, you think of a single... 
uh, stuffed into her g-string. <laughs> you know, everybody in the world has two of these and you can't come up with the word? Apparently not. There we go. Oh, I'm not getting any. You know, there are so many ways to take that. And all of them are correct. You know what I'm going to do? <laughs> I'm going to read the newspaper. Fine. You know, I never get to do it at home, because, you know, I'm always getting interrupted by the wife or the daughter or the phone or the, the crap on television. Hey, I catch one of these fish, and you go and throw it back in. Well, it's floating there. Scoop it up. Oh. Fine. There you go, Mike. Now you've caught two fish. <laughs> oh, wow. What? A woman in Ohio gave birth to a 90-pound dwarf who brings a message of world peace. Really? Yeah, it says so right here. Wow, no kidding, eh? Yeah, here's a political article, too. It says, Alabama town sheriff is actually a beagle. No kidding, eh? I wonder what Huckleberry Hound was doing. It's true, Red. Look, look. They got a picture of the dog in uniform right there. Well, that's fake, dog. What? They'd never let the ear stick out through the hat like that. Come Every on. police dog I ever met was always plain clothed. Well, it, it says here the Beagle has a specially adapted squad car that doesn't have a siren because he can stick his head out the window and go, oh! Dalton, you don't believe that, who? Why not? It's in the paper. Yeah, well, instead of looking at a tabloid, try a real newspaper. OK. Ambassador predicts Middle East peace. Oh, the mayor promises no new taxes. Hollywood wants to make some more family-friendly movies. Here. every man finds really hard to do. Number one is parallel park. Number two is explain to your wife why you watch this show. Now, I can only deal with one problem at a time, so I'm gonna focus on the parallel parking. The problem's pretty simple. You need the car to move sideways, but the wheels don't point that way. Well, what if you add a set of wheels? Smaller wheels. These are brand new caster wheels. They're too pricey for me, so Dalton just loaned me a bunch. Or at least I'm sure he would have if he was home. <laughs> now I'm gonna mount those casters on this heavy-duty piece of marine plywood. Okay, I'm not good with metric. This is one-inch ply, but if you're buying it from a Canadian lumber store, you gotta switch over to Celsius, which I believe is a nine deca a heck a liter. Something like that. Okay, first thing you wanna do is you gotta cut this thing so it's the same length as the distance between the front and back wheels. Wow, for once in my life, everything's working out perfect. Okay, I got the board mounted on there with a jack in each corner. Got the casters underneath pointing sideways. This looks like a winner to me. How can you lose with four jacks? The jacks are activated by what were cordless drills, but I got them running off the cigarette lighter. They're nine volt drills and the car is 12 volt, so that should save me a lot of time. And the beauty of DC is that you can reverse the drills by just switching the wires. So I got one cigarette lighter for lowering the unit, and I got another one for raising it. I'm done with parallel parking. I'm into perpendicular parking. I'm ready to go. 
just roll the car out and drop the tires back onto the road. So remember, if the women don't find you, hat, hurts. Oh. They should at least find you creative. my age get upset because they can't seem to find a decent conversation. They say, nobody wants to talk to me anymore, when the truth is, nobody wants to listen to you anymore. <laughs> conversation is an art, not an outlet, okay? It's not a sporting event where your goal is to dominate. Think of the last conversation you had with a friend. Oh, I know you rattled on for 15 minutes without breathing. <laughs> but what did they say? What did you hear from them? Was it phrases like, oh, really? Well, well, and I gotta go. <laughs> then no wonder you can't find a conversation. You don't need a friend, you need a podium. <laughs> Try being on the receiving end a little more often. You know, even a sewage plant has to take something in before it spews anything out. <laughs> and you might want to think before you talk. Don't walk up to the new neighbor and start ragging on about all the problems with organized religion only to find out he's a Lutheran minister. <laughs> and don't say the word porker until you've seen the size of his wife. <laughs> Every time you shoot your mouth off, you hit yourself in the foot. <laughs> Try listening. You got one mouth and two ears. There's a reason for that. <laughs> I, on the other hand, have a hat over mine. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. There's a famous quote that says, you can never go home. Well, if this applies to your house, maybe it's time you get your septic pup. Rothschild Sewage and Septic Sucking Services. Oh, there we go. Yeah, Dalton asked me to find this bottle of animal musk. <laughs> female scent in there that attracts the male animals when you spread it out on bushes or whatever. It's kind of like sex appeal in a bottle. You know? <laughs> it scares me to think what Dalton wants it for. <laughs> oh, boy. How do I look? Oh, Harold, don't ask me that. I'm not a good liar. Just, you know, I'm a little bit nervous. You yeah. know, I don't want Bonnie's parents to really like me. Yeah. <laughs> Just, I mean, I am marrying their daughter. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm thinking they've waited a while, so they've probably lowered their standards a bit. <laughs> Seriously, I look okay? Yeah, no, you look fine. Good, I smell okay? You look fine. <laughs> this is that aftershave they advertise on TV. Uh-huh. Wow. <laughs> smells a lot better on TV. Well, I'm gonna go meet my new family. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I sure hope they're not a bunch of dorks or something like that, eh? <laughs> Did you find that bottle of musk? Yeah, it's right here. What do you, what do you want it for, Dalton? Well, you know, I spread it around the parking lot at my store. Uh -huh. Customers see the animals, and they don't look so closely at my prices. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, that's good. Huh? Huh? Hmm? Oh, this isn't right. Huh? This smells like aftershave. No, no, this, this is aftershave here. Yeah. No, no, Red, that is animal musk. <laughs> Bill and I were gonna spend the day on the lake and he wanted to use the canoe, but I just didn't feel like going in the canoe. And uh, Bill had, I guess, had a little more sanding to do. So I, Bill, no, we're not, no, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna do something else. I have a boat, I had left a boat up there in, in the woods uh, a couple of years back, and I knew exactly where it was. Sorry, Bill. And, uh, yeah, she's down in here somewhere. Yeah, here we go, the boat, oh, oh, oh. Watch out for the tongue of the trailer there, Bill. Yeah, so I figure I'll just get, I'll go get the possum fan, clear some bush out of there, and uh, and then we'll, we'll just uh, haul her out. It's got the hitch on the back and everything. So as I was going back to the van, I, I, I noticed there was a bit of the broken, I thought maybe I'll just cover that up, it's kind of a little recycling, I don't want to be able to see that. You know, that was, that was a complete accident as far as I'm concerned. So we get the possum van uh, hooked up to the, uh, to the boat trailer and uh, attached it real good. Uh, but what had happened? 
happened was the trees had kind of grown up around the boat, so I just, you know, there was no way I could get, get it cleared out of there, so there was no way of getting the boat out unless we knock some of those, uh, we need to take some of those trees down. That's the only way out. Bill's, Bill's got an idea, he's got an axe, he's gonna, oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's not really what I had in mind, Bill, and I noticed that the head is now missing on his axe, and we're looking around for that. Can't figure out quite where that went, and so I got a hole in my boat now, and there's only one thing worse than a hole in your boat, and that would be two holes in your boat. And where's the head of the, oh, there it is. Yeah, okay. All right, so, yeah, luckily, uh, Bill gets back working on the boat, and, you know, I'll tell you one thing, the trees are safe. So I, I take the axe. Okay, let's get the axe. Let's try something a little, a little safer than that. All right, this is, okay, a buck's, uh, uh, same problem. So I'm saying, Bill, here, let me, let me just see that for a minute. Yeah, all right, I think something else, Bill. Must be something else. Bill, okay, good idea. Okay, now do not ever fill your chainsaw up, up like that. I'm thinking to myself, this is gonna be interesting. Uh, and it is. Get the, no, 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 no. So he gets her going, and uh, I think he had the mix off on the oil and gas, because she was smoking real good. And uh, it got to the point, like, I couldn't see what he was doing, and that didn't matter. The, the big problem was he couldn't see uh, what he was doing, but the trees were coming down. So I thought, okay, bend for the doubt, we'll get the, the boat out. But I'm not sure it was technically even a boat anymore at this point. Okay, Bill, now what? Well, good old Bill always has another plan. So he starts uh, pulling the logs together, and then I realize what he's up to. Down to the boat ramp, we got the outboard mounted on the back of a, a log ramp with the boat windshield and the canoe front. When you used to have these electric blankets with the dual controls so your wife could simmer on her own side of the bed <laughs> then once the hot flashes started you replace this baby with a 40 horsepower ceiling fan <laughs> well today we're going to turn this unit into something useful okay first you want to cut the no first unplug it <laughs> second cut the one side into strips about a foot wide now, you're probably going to snip through a few wires as you go, but just reconnect them later with the handyman's secret solder. <laughs> okay, now you just attach those strips to the edge of the other half of the blanket, and that way the dual controls will allow us to set one temperature for the center and a different temperature for the outside. Have you figured out where I'm going with this? <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. Now, I never have to worry about dinner getting cold again. Because on the outside edge, I got her set on warm, because that's where my dinner plates are. And then for the serving dishes in the middle, I got her cranked to the max. Now, if you're serving something cold like salad, well, don't. Nobody likes salad. Serve hot dishes. Now, if you'll excuse me, I see by my electric blanket that it's time for me to tuck in. I've been over at Bonnie's place for a while, and I haven't heard any emergencies on the police band radio. So <laughs> I guess everything's okay. It was an accident that he covered himself with animal musk, but it's probably worn off by now, you know. That's a wolf! A wolf! He chased me all the way home! What does he want? Probably just your phone number. I got an idea. Take the jacket off, and we'll splash some animal musk on it. I thought that was aftershave. Yeah, I made a mistake. Turns out Old Spice is young moose. <laughs> oh, but I like this jacket. Not as much as Mr. Wolf does. Let's get it off there. Why can't I have a normal life? You don't want to know, Harold. Okay, give okay. me the jacket. Yeah. Take this. Oh, boy. We shouldn't be watching this. No. <laughs> They're in love. Oh, I know. I know. Boy, this is all happening on the first date, huh? You know what? I'm going to give them a little privacy. What should I do? 
Uh, wait a couple of minutes and then toss the wolf a cigarette. <laughs> Boy, this musk stuff is pretty powerful. Well, oh, you don't know it's nature. Nature's the powerful stuff. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how'd it go over at Bonnie's place? Was the musk a problem? No, not really. No. no. Her mother was a little threatened, but her father kept putting his arm around me. So, yeah, yeah. The dog really liked me. Oh, boy. <laughs> he proposed to my leg. Meeting time. Yeah, you go ahead, Harold. I'll be right down, okay? <laughs> yeah, be careful with that. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, and I hope you're gonna put on that scent that drives me crazy. Honey garlic. <laughs> and the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Harold and the wolf and everybody else up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice. your heads in man's prayer. I'm a man, I'm a man. and I can live I, I have to I I <laughs> Okay, men, we had a bit of a labeling mix up on the, on the musk that you've been using. So uh, we need you to stop spreading that over all the trees and bushes and everything because the whole forest is starting to smell like Buster Hadfield's car. 